Hello friends, I'm Ellen Gormley and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm talking about the, um, I don't even know what this blanket is going to be called, the uh, jungle blanket, the spontaneous blanket, I have no idea. This is a commission for Hirschner's and while I'm assembling the squares I wanted to explain to you how it works so that when the um, blanket is published later you can use this as a helper. So in another video I will make a square or show you how to make a square but this is all just one yarn that changes color like suddenly. So what I did was I made all of the squares first. So we're, depending on where you are in the skein, the color is different. So I made all of the squares first, fastened them off, and then chained an additional 15. Because now what I did was then I laid out all the different squares, grouped them how I wanted them, and now I'm gonna go back unravel and join them. So I am going to, once I had all my squares done, I am lay them all out flat and I'm now going to unravel the last side because I want to join it as I go to the very first one that's already made. So here's one that's 100% done and if I want to join one side then I'm going to unravel to this corner here and finish this square and while I'm doing that I'm going to join it to the already completed um, first square. So the very anytime you're joining just one side then this is what you will do. So I have this cluster this treble five cluster here and I did it just like all the other corners we'll have to look at the other video for the full square but I am ch I chained I'm going to chain go back to pull back to chain two and then I'll slip stitch in the corresponding corner, chain two. Then I will slip stitch in the top of the whole cluster. And we'll basically chain two, we'll uh, slip stitch in the first motif, the one that's already done, chain two. This is instead of a chain five space. Now we will single crochet on the current motif, the one that we're currently finishing, because the um, instructions for that final round include single crochets in the chain five loops. Okay, so we're uh, chain two, one, two, slip stitch in the corresponding chain five loop over here, slip stitch, chain two, and single crochet here in the next chain five loop. So I want you to, you're probably wondering, why are we not single crocheting on both sides? Well, because we already single crocheted as we finish the round over here. It's where it comes together that we are single crocheting, okay? So, and we're doing a chain two, slip stitch, chain two, which replaces the chain five, so. Okay, and now we're at the corner. So we've chained two, we've slip stitched in that last loop before the corner, we've chained two here, and now we need to do another corner. So we're gonna yarn over twice and do the five treble cluster in this corner. And in the middle of this five treble cluster, when we're tying it all together and doing that pico at the top, is where we will join it. So... And because I gave myself 15 extra chains, which was probably too many, but I didn't know how many I was going to need, um, I have plenty of yarn to add these extra slip stitches to joining. So chain one, two, slip stitch in the corresponding um, pico or chain five loop here in the corner with a slip stitch, chain one, two, come back on the current motif and join in the corner. And then here we're just finishing off the rest of the side. So we have joined the very first motif we made. Here's the second one. We've joined it as we're finishing this final round and there's nothing to join here yet. So this is theoretically the only the second motif. We're just joining one row, one side um, some of the time. So one, two, three, four, five, because we're just doing this and we're joining in the single crochet with a slip stitch. And then we'll just pull that long tail through of those chains that I pulled out, that extra waste yarn that gave me enough yarn to make sure I could do these 
joining stitches. So now that I know that 15 stitches, 15 single crochet, I'm um, sorry, 15 chains is too much, I probably would go down to like five <laughs> or six so that I know that I have enough slip stitch um, yarn to make the slip stitches and um, I'm not wasting too much yarn. Okay, so that's how you join just one side. Now I'm actually just about finished with the blanket, which is why I was like, oh, I'd better hurry up and come over here and show you how to do this before I am all finished and because I'm not gonna unravel it, I need to ship it. So we have, I'm sorry, where I'm at the dark part of the, the blanket, I started with the light colors and I put all the light colors at the top. You're not gonna be able to get the blanket to look exactly like mine. It's just, I don't know how your yarn is gonna fall, if you make mistakes or if you have um, colors where you need to cut or whatever, or if you're in the middle of a, of a color. So you just make all the squares and then lay them all out flat and decide where they're gonna go and then unravel that last bit so here I'm going to join two sides. This is the whole blanket over here, and I have one left in the bottom right corner to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in place where it's going to go, but I actually need to unravel all of this on this final row back to this upper corner so that I can join here first and then consider keep working this way, join here to the other three in the spot, and finish off down here. So let me maybe put this a little higher so you can see a little bit better of where the plan is. Sorry for the jostling. Okay, so I have my finished square with my 15 chain tail that really only needs to be a five or six chain tail. So I'm going to unravel all the way to the very first part that I need to join. So I'm unraveling, unraveling. This is okay. This is part of the process. It's not scary. It's not... Um, unfortunate it's just part of the plan so we just had to do this so we could figure out where we wanted all our colors to go so I'm unraveling down to two chains here insert my hook and we will go ahead and join in the corner like we did on the one side so now we're joining two sides so I'm gonna finish this row this joining row like we were just doing one side and then we'll do the other side get this in here and you're seeing me in action finishing this blanket but then of course I have to do the ends and put an edging on it so one two so we're single crocheting on the new one as we're finishing it we are slip stitching on the one that was already finished and previously there single crocheting here always chain two on either side of the join whether it be a slip stitch or a chain or a um, sl slip stitch or a single crochet rather making sure not to tangle that end. I'm sorry about the dark yarn, but this is just how it worked out. So now that I'm here in the corner, I actually need to make one more corner and join it to the three. So I am going to start working my corner now with a five treble cluster, yarning over twice, getting five of those half made stitches made then tie them all together with a yarn over and pull through all of them big old blonde hair there pull that out okay make sure i have five there's four yarn over twice okay okay so when we have all five treble crochets here then i'll yarn over and pull all of them pull it through all of the loops chain two one two now to join with the other three okay so here's the other three squares one two three so we have the corners here the clusters and let's see if i can get you a better view so the three clusters come here it really doesn't matter where you get it in there but remember you've got the chain loop here You've got the chain loop here. You've got the chain loop here. So you just want to make sure and get in the middle of all of that mess and get two strands of something in there when you yarn over there and then pull through with a slip stitch. And I usually put my hook underneath. There you go. And then chain two. And then continue on your merry way with joining this row the same way you did with this one. So I am going to um, slip stitch, let's see, slip stitch here, chain two, single crochet here, 
chain two, slip stitch here, chain two, single crochet on the new one, going back and forth like a little lattice, chain two, slip stitch here on the older one, chain two, and I need to make a corner, so I'm doing the triple, five triple cluster, pull up five treble cluster, whatever you wanna call it. I'm out of, this, out of the frame there, sorry about that. So I'm just making the five treble cluster the way we did before, so by um, placing a half made treble, five of them in the space, the corner space, and then I will yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. Chain two and join with the chain five loop of the corner here. And then I'll just finish this little part and I need to turn my whole blanket. I need to turn my whole blanket just because, let's see if I lost where I was. <laughs> find my working yarn because on my lap I totally would turn all of this stuff okay so I'm on the corner here chain two then I will get back into this top of the cluster with a slip stitch and I dropped it it's all right one two three four five this time because we are now are on this final little finish up and fasten off. This is the edge of the blanket. And pull that through. So we now have joined two sides and I can reorient it the way you originally saw it so you can see that I fit this square into the blanket that already had these. So when you're joining two sides, that's how you do it. You just do one and do two, but you just have to pull back or um, frog out pull out the yarn far enough back that you can make the first join. If you only pull out halfway and then you're like, oh no, I don't have enough room, you gotta undo it. <laughs> There's just no way around it. So I'm adding these photos in after the fact. The blanket on the left is the one that I originally made that was my favorite. They asked me to take it apart and redo it so that the colors flowed into each other right like they came off the skein instead of completing a square and then putting them in a group the way I did, period. I just wanted to show a different way to use multicolor or ombre yarn, but they wanted it to be more organic to how it comes out of the skein. Let me know in the comments below, which one is your favorite? Do you like the one grouped by color or do you like the one that's more random? And what would you do? Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ellen Gormley. I hope that you spent the last few minutes with a relaxing and valuable use of your crochet time. If you've not seen the last video, click up here if you've got a few more minutes. If you have seen it, here's another one I think you might really like, but everybody don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. See you next time.